Thank you very much for inviting me to this international forum on electronized future energy systems, hosted by Tsinghua University virtually in Beijing, China. It is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to present to you our ideas about the global integrate, which is our vision of the future electronic power system that could provide sustainable energy abundance for humanity. I would also like to thank my co-authors, Dr. Igor Cvetkovic and Dr. Dong Dong for working with me over the last 15 years to develop this vision. As power electronics engineers, we have been thinking how we can help in preventing the catastrophe of global warming and polluting ourselves out of existence. Some of the questions that we have been pondering are, will electrical energy play a major role in solving the energy challenges of society? Can today's electric grid technologies provide adequate solutions? How power electronics could enable new electrical systems for sustainable energy society? And what research and development in power electronics is needed for new electrical systems? So in this presentation, we would like to share with you our high level ideas, how these questions could be answered. We will attempt to explain why we think that electrical energy will play a major role in solving the energy challenges of society. Today's smart grid technologies cannot provide adequate solutions alone. We believe also that high energy power electronics can enable new electrical systems for sustainable energy societies. And we are sure that we need new research directions, new education profiles, new businesses, new public policy, and global leadership. As electrical engineers, we can be very proud how much we have improved the quality of life by electrifying most of the world over the last century. Today, 1.5 billion people in the developed world have very comfortable life by using 25 kilowatt hours of electrical energy every day. In the developing world, like China, 2.5 billion people achieving a very good life with just one third of electricity but there are many more unsatisfied needs. On the other hand, half of humanity is still deprived from most of the electrification benefits, with over 1 billion of them not having any electricity. But we have also hugely contributed to the global warming. Most of this electricity is produced from fossil fuels, which nature has collected from sun and stored underground over the last billion years. To make the things even worse, electricity accounts for only 20% of human energy usage. The other 80% is all produced by burning these fossil fuels. So how can we achieve our goal of sustainable energy abundance, where everyone will have all the energy they need and where all the energy will be supplied with net zero carbon emissions? I call this the second green revolution. The first green revolution happened over the last 50 years when humanity has accomplished sustainable food abundance by creatively utilizing biological and geological sciences and engineering to transform the agriculture around the world. I have a dream that we will be able to do the same by using electricity as the main energy support and distribution medium to supply more than 80% of total energy carbon-free through electricity instead of only 20% today. To do this, we will have to develop global electronic energy system to balance continuously the varying renewable energy generation with the varying energy consumptions. This is the responsibility of electronic power systems. Let us first see if switching from fossil fuels to 100% renewable energy supply is possible. Earth receives over 4 million terawatt hours of energy each day from the sun. This is almost 10,000 times more than the 450 terawatt hours that humans are using on average per day. Therefore, we are receiving much, much, much more energy than we need for the sustainable energy abundance. For example, 
In 30 years, there will be around 10 billion people on the Earth, and if every one of them will be using two times more energy than an average American today, we would still need only 0.1% of energy that is continuously received from sun at the Earth's surface. The only question then is how to collect that energy and transport it to where it is needed. It has been shown by others that the 450 terawatt hours per day can be supplied using existing solar technologies if only 500,000 kilometers squared are covered by PV panels. This is just 2.5% of unpopulated sunny deserts in the world. These are the small squares that you can see on the world map. And carbon-free electricity can also be produced by hydropower, wind power, nuclear, oceans, etc. So the needed area could be much smaller. Even if we need 10 times more energy for the sustainable abundance, it would be still less than 20% of unpopulated areas in the Earth, shown in light green on the map. So we already have the technologies for collecting enough energy, but the question is how to transport it. As expected, energy consumption is not where the production is, because we do not live in deserts. Even worse, between the day and night, most of the energy is not generated where and when it is needed. So it would be absolutely necessary to establish a global network for energy transport that would almost instantaneously balance the continuously varying renewable generation with the varying consumptions. There are two big issues with this. One is global transport, and the other one is extremely fast power flow adjustments that needed. The first issue of global energy supply is over 100 years old. Today, over one-third of world primary energy is traded internationally. And over the last 70 years, humanity has succeeded to keep global energy supplies almost uninterrupted, even in the face of many geopolitical crises. But the adjustment of power flow is extremely slow. The time constants are tens of minutes or hours for power grids and weeks or months for oil tankers. But somehow, we have learned how to maintain our global energy supply chains balanced with minimum disruptions. And the COVID-19 pandemic is reminding us that global problems must use global solutions. On the other hand, in the last 25 years, electrical engineers have already wired up the whole world and implemented internet protocols for continuous and instantaneous information delivery between any two human beings anywhere around the globe. And now, because it is electro-optical systems, not mechanical, the time constants for information packet switching are in the milliseconds for live audio video connections like this Zoom meeting, and less than seconds for large file transfers. So we know how to transfer electrical signals freely, instantaneously and reliably around the globe. Can we use this experience to change the power grid? Well, the first thing is that we cannot just attach internet to the old grid and hope that it will solve everything. Smart grid is not enough. What we need is a completely new electronic power grid one that can balance varying generation and varying consumption with sub-second time constants. Let us explain this in a bit more detail on the next slide. This is an illustration of simplified electrical transmission system in the eastern United States, connecting many different nodes or high voltage substation where we have large power plants and or load centers. Balancing of generation and consumption is achieved by controlling the power flow using switches. That is, we can turn on or off the power stations, or we can disconnect or connect different transmission lines to assure that the power flows from where it is available to where it is needed. But this electromechanical system that was built over the last 100 years is too slow to react to the fast changing renewable generation. This movie shows in real time measured changes in the line frequency around 60 Hz 
in the eastern United States after loss of one transmission line in Florida. It shows how even a small disturbance is propagated within seconds throughout United States and Canada and reinforces our assertion that such fast changes cannot be counter-regulated with electromechanical control even if all the measurement data is available instantaneously over the Internet. Simply, today's grid is incapable of balancing 100% renewable generation with consumption, even if there is a massive distributed energy storage capacity. On the other hand, if all subsystem switchyards are replaced with electronic energy routers, which can continuously regulate power flow like the power electronics light dimmers, then we should be able to very precisely and almost instantaneously control the flows of electrical energy so that the exactly needed amounts are delivered to where and when they are needed. This new electronic grid is ultra responsive and capable of balancing varying generation with varying consumption, even with minimal energy storage capacities. To illustrate the previous point, we have simulated a situation where a 3 gigawatt, 4,000 kilometer long, undersea HVDC line connecting two continents has to be turned off for some reason and the whole power transferred to another 3 gigawatt line. The simulation shows that transferring 2,300 amperes from one line to another can be done in less than 100 milliseconds. For uninterrupted power delivery, this huge intercontinental power transfer would require less than 100 kilowatt hours of energy storage, which is equivalent to just one Tesla car. Thus, we already have all the basic technologies that are needed to build the global integrid, which will be sending packets of electrical energy at the speed of light between any two points on the Earth connected by electrical conductors with efficiencies exceeding 90%. But before we can start building the global integrid, we must first estimate how much energy needs to be transferred around the globe as the peak power demand and the generation capacity under the worst operating conditions are continuously changing over the day and night and over the seasons. From this analysis, we'll be able to evaluate how large is the HVDC network that will enable sunny ranges on the Earth to supply energy to areas under dark and at sub-second time constants. It could be calculated that the global integrid would need thousands of fast HVDC lines with cumulative power rating of around 6 terawatts for east-west energy transfers and around 3 terawatts for north-south energy flows, most of which will be energized all the time and will be continuously adjusting the energy flow to maintain fully controllable instantaneous global power balance. So here is the summary of this story in numbers. Today, we already have technologies for HVDC lines rated at 3 gigawatts using plus minus 640 kilovolts bipoles. For latitudinal power flow from the previous analysis, we can calculate that we need 70 million kilometers of such lines. For longitudinal power flow, we need 30 million kilometers. So the total 100 million kilometers of aluminum cable can be built with around $70 trillion. For comparison, to cover a total overnight energy demand using batteries, we would require more than $100 trillion. Based on these calculations, the total cost of the global integrid, including cables, HVDC stations, and PV panels, can be estimated to be around $160 trillion. This is huge money. Global annual GDP is around $90 trillion today. So sustainable energy abundance can be achieved in 30 years if we will be using 6% of GDP every year. Furthermore, it is very important to note that the global supplies of silicon from sand, aluminum from bauxite, 
plastics from CO2 capture, sea and air, and energy from sun are sufficient for this scenario. Finally, let's look what could be possible architecture of such an integrity. We have been talking about the transcontinental HVDC lines. In this slide, the blue lines designate DC systems, red lines are used for AC, and green boxes represent electronic energy routers, which are bidirectional power converters for point-to-point -point energy flow and which include integral protection. Initially, these HVDC lines will be connecting existing AC transmission systems with much traditional power generation. In the existing AC grids, there will be classical AC distribution systems, which will be including more and more of distributed energy resources like PV, wind, and EV charging infrastructure. But even the homes will be more modern and may include, in addition to the normal household loads, also PV and even wind generation. As well as energy storage. More and more of these houses may have EV charging stations, which could be bidirectional. This will allow not only to charge the EV, but also to use it as energy storage when the grid is or locally renewable resources are not available. In this case, electric vehicle could be represented as a PICO grid which has its own distributed generation, its own loads, and it could interact with the higher level system, the house in energy management through PICO electronic energy router. Similarly, the house smart meter and the breaker panel could be replaced also with bidirectional converter, a nanoelectronic energy router that would make the building a nanogrid. This would allow the electrical system within a house to be completely decoupled from the grid, having its own frequency and energy management that will collaborate with the grid in the needed. Some other houses could even be DC nanogrids while connecting to a traditional AC distribution. Such a neighborhood would then form an advanced AC microgrid. On the other hand, in the places without any grid infrastructure, everything could be built uh, with new technology starting from the scratch. So there is no reason to use AC system when everything is DC. The people there may even acquire a small electric scooter and add it to their small and isolated DC nanogrid. Furthermore, houses in the village could support each other and even expand renewable generation capacity while still not being connected to the main grid. At some point, the grid will come to them but by using the microelectronic energy router for the connection, none of the existing DC infrastructure would have to be changed because the router completely decouples dynamics between the two systems while facilitating energy management. Even more, the connected AC grid will also change in the future to a DC milligrid. So Intergrid has a fractal architecture, which is a hierarchical network of dynamically decoupled, electronically interconnected subnetworks. Its main characteristics are every X-grid is connected to a higher level by an electronic energy router. There is distributed energy generation and storage level at every level. Every X-grid has ability to operate in islanded mode. There is no thermal mechanical switch gear. All the protection is provided by electronic energy routers. Step up and step down and isolation functions are provided by the power converters so there are no low frequency transformers. There are extensive communication and control capabilities between and within electronic energy routers. And finally, there is a huge amount of research needed to develop standardized energy transfer and interconnection protocols. Is this ever going to happen? Well, it is already happening in the small autonomous power systems like cars, ships, trains, and airplanes, and also in the fast-growing big countries like China. So I am very optimistic. And why are we doing it? Because we owe it to the humankind. Thank you.